Hey, 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 welcome to Dominion, where our pastors are pastors Kenneth and Shirley Lawrence and Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm associate pastor to Shayla Lawrence, and we welcome you into our service this day, where you will hear a word of faith, a word of encouragement, a word of power, a word of deliverance, and a word of salvation, and a word that is just for you. So don't go nowhere. Tune in and hear the word. Hey, 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 welcome to Dominion, where our pastors are pastors Kenneth and Shirley Lawrence and Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm associate pastor to Shayla Lawrence, and we welcome you into our service this day, where you will hear a word of faith, a word of encouragement, a word of power, a word of deliverance, and a word of salvation, and a word that is just for you. So don't go nowhere. Tune in and hear the word. Hey, 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 welcome to the... After this morning, yeah. amen, come on, I still got the afterglow Me? going on. Yes, I got the afterglow going on. I was bored yeah. out by the time I got to that. <laughs> when that. When that anointing dropped off, yeah. did you go to sleep, oh, sister? Lynn? I was sitting there watching football with my mama, but I was glad to leave the church. <laughs> <laughs> I know when that anointing falls totally off, it's just like, can I find somewhere to lay myself down with? in Jesus' name? But I'm telling you, praise be unto the Lord, what a joyous time we had yeah. this morning. Yeah. But you know what? It's going to happen again tonight yeah. in Jesus' yeah. name. That's what I'm so excited Amen. about because it's not just a one time thing. Amen. Come on. So let's give God glory. Let's invite Hallelujah. Him in tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to talk about who he is. If you agree, Gloria, going to go with us. Shout it out and Gloria, make it louder. Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise, Lord.
deserve. Amen. Father, we thank you for your time that you're here with us tonight, the opportunity for us to come together, join in like heart, like mind, like spirit, Father God, to worship and praise you, Lord God. You are welcome in this house. We acknowledge you in this house. We worship and praise you, exalt you, extol you, Lord God, adore you. Yes, Father. In Jesus' most awesome name. And we ask that you will take your way with each and every one of us, Lord God, because you love us all the same, but you love us individually. And your son, Jesus Christ, and the blood he shed upon us, we were still far, far, far away from him. And Lord God, we just want to thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like he can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
thank you, Lord. Oh, we can't get tired of talking about our Lord and Savior tonight. Amen. He's glorious. He's our joy. And now we're talking about he's bigger than your situation and your problem. Come on, come on. I say he's bigger than your situation and your problem. I'm glad he's bigger than my situation. I'm glad I don't have to figure it out. I'm glad that God has already got it worked out for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
you believe it? You believe he's got it? He's got it in on control? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I got up this morning, amen, We're getting ready to come to the house of God. And this old, old song by Dottie Peoples popped into my mind, into my spirit. He's an on-time God. Amen. He is an on-time God. And she said in that song, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Because he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Will you put your hands together? Welcome to the pulpit tonight. The pastor of Dominion Holy Ghost Deliverance Tabernacle. Our very own beloved, Pastor Kenneth Lawrence Sr. Everybody, amen. You know, uh, I have to say, this morning I seen revival. That's what I'm saying. I seen a move of God this morning. Yeah. When the word starts snatching tears out of your eyes, shaking your demon, you better know God getting ready to deliver. Something that happened in this city going to wreck this whole city because of what God is. Hallelujah. Something is, somebody say something about to happen. Something, something is about to happen. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everyone tonight, amen, to marriage made better, not bitter. Amen. Uh, I also want to say, you know, we are high side my dear son this morning. <laughs> <laughs> See, Cheryl said that. She mentioned tech, and that was it. That was it. And you know, I got a good son. Yeah, I got a blessed son. And uh, I'm proud of him. I'm totally proud of him. He makes me smile all the time. Yeah, he does. But he's a good child. He's a good son. Amen. Amen. He's a very good son. He has, you know, he cherished the word I say, the things I do. Uh, he mimicked it. He, he he falls right in line with it. Amen. Because he, uh, I guess he always tell me I was his hero. But he's a good son. Even though y'all high side and y'all shouldn't did that. Y'all need to repent. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> I told my baby, I said, uh, yeah, I said, you're such a good son. I say, now, he helped me get this battery on my wife's car. I said, you're such a good son. You let me high side you, and yet you help me. Amen. I mean, no, that's a blessing. Amen. That's totally a blessing in Jesus' name. Also, you know, uh, Sister Liz preached powerful this morning. Yeah. Yes, she did. <clears throat> she surely did. But her mentor is Ken. Yeah. I believe in school of prophet, I signed uh, the, I think the, 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 the students, amen, ministers or mentors, amen, gave each one, uh, each one a uh, leader that was in this church to be mentored by them. And, uh, I know if they got Ken, they were going to get straight. Sister Mika, who did I point you to? Oh, okay, amen, amen. And it's very important, your, your mentor man is not supposed to befriend you. Yeah, it's not supposed to, not supposed to befriend you. I don't, don't care who you are. Your mentor is not supposed to befriend you, but love you and correct you. Hello, somebody. And that's most important that you have a mentor in your life that mentor you, not join an agreement with your wrongdoing, but straighten you out so you can make it in Jesus' name. The young man that was at the altar, he was uh, in the school of prophet. 
Amen. See, wanting to be a minister is not a very serious thing just from your naturalness. To be a minister, you have to go through the pressing, the rebuke, the persecution, things that people may say against you because they don't like you or things they might get offended about because you said some truth. A mentor is not going to befriend you. He's going to correct you. And I told Sister Liz this morning, continue to do what God called you to do so you don't get out of the wheel or out from under your mentor. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I think Micah Hay was over a mentor some people, and they want to fight him. See, it shouldn't be a way that uh, you mentor anyone, they want to turn on you. Right. They should want to hear your advice. They should want to hear your counsel. They should want to hear you, amen, rebuke. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you in the house with me? Yeah. Uh, Elijah, before I get into marriage, made better, not bitter. Elijah had a armor bearer. I, I call him an associate minister. And Elijah you know, healed Naaman and by telling him to go wash in the water. And then Naaman tried to offer him some goods. Elijah turned down the goods. But the one that he was mentoring couldn't see no reason to turn that down. Amen. Hello. Keep turning down what people are trying to offer you. Hallelujah. Keep turning it down. And you're going to find people trying to bring you to a place to tell you what you should do. Well, if it were me, I'd be doing now. What you should do is be part and totally humble before your mentor. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Elijah's servant, since Elijah wouldn't take the money, his servant went to Elijah, go in the house and run down Naaman. And as Naaman said, now, my, my master didn't want to, but, 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 huh. I don't need you to leave with that right about now. I, I've been waiting on him to go ahead and take some spars. He's been winning, but he ain't been taking the spars. He's been walking off and leaving, but not today. He said, now, I want you to go ahead and leave it in my hand. See, when people start turning on their mentors, they start rebelling against their order. Come on, somebody. And this is why it's so much need that, that you give God, give Ken Jr. total respect. Because he is the one pouring into you what's happening out of you. Oh, are you listening to me? This is why it's important to be submitted to a pastor. You can never take his place. Even though if you try, you can't take his place. Because when you're submitted, Satan is resisted. The Bible says submit to God and the devil will flee. Submit to your pastor and demons will flee. Can I get somebody to say amen? So I, I want you to know, uh, Ken, I, I apologize to him. I ask you, please forgive me. He said, all right, you know. <laughs> hey, man, that's my baby. You know, I don't care how old he get. He's my man. Amen. There's none of the kids I got outside this marriage that would treat me like my son. Amen. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Amen. But I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him how he went through things. To become who he is. Wow. Yeah. And uh, not only that, you know, he saw me for years live in a gangster state. Live as a gang member. Shoot my gun, gamma, do everything else, run clubs and everything. He saw me years do this stuff. And soon as he started getting his team, I changed. I got out of it. He never seen his dad do that again. I stopped shooting guns and running people and messing up their parties. 
I would go to parties just to fight. Didn't want me in your party. <laughs> I was a troublemaker. But when I came out of it, God saved me. And he pulled the scales out my eyes so I can see who I really are. And I started serving God with the fullness, with abandonment of the world. I abandoned the world fast. Amen. Because I start pursuing God. Longer you pursue God, you'll never pursue the world. Longer you pursuing God, you'll never turn around and go back to the world. And when I start pursuing God, things start changing my, my life. Things that we was doing before him start changing. And he wa- didn't have no understanding. Why is you changing like this, man? Why, why are you doing this to me? You know, and he would get in a corner. He'll want to talk to me. He said, no, I don't want to talk to the preacher. I want to talk to my daddy. I said, I am your daddy. The difference about the daddy you talked to when I was in sin was a demonized daddy. But today, I'm a born-again child of God. And he never could communicate with old Kenneth no more because it was gone. And every time he wanted to, I didn't manifest nothing but what God said. Amen. Once so much being the preacher more than being saved. Save from what I have showed him to do. I used to raise my son up and blow dope in his nose when he was at the age of two years old. Because I wanted him to be more like me. I didn't want him to live in a state, amen, a uh, wimp highway called him a sissy. I didn't want him to be a sissy. I, you know, I'd be an ignorant. Really? So what I did, I would give him charges. I, a dope. I would blow in my child's nostrils. And he would get so drunk at the age of two and three. Somebody said, Lord, forgive him. He would get so drunk till he couldn't walk. Because I wanted him to be so much like me. And it came to be that he started acting just like me by watching what I do, hearing what I said, and the way I act when I was in a place of fighting or doing things. So when I left that, it left him in sort of confusion. Why did you leave me like this? I say, son, I say, I'm not that person no more. I belong to God. And I couldn't try to turn him by pushing him. I had to allow God to give me wisdom to turn him. Because I was always beating up on him about the things he was doing. He was just looking at me and said, what I'm doing is what you was doing. Yeah. (laughs) So God gave me some wisdom. He said, Ken, he said, I didn't beat you into submission. I love you into submission. When God spoke to me, I took my time out every Monday while my son was somewhere else living. I would drive my car all the way where he was and stay a night, sleep in the bed while he was drunk with him. I don't care if he got through smoking dope, whatever it was. I wanted my son to know I loved him. And because of that, he seen my life was studied progressively in God. He didn't see me change. He seen me, he seen my wife and I stand the same. We never did do anything contrary to what we say we was. We did it like God told us to do it before him. And therefore, it took holes to him. It took holes to him. And as you see right now, he stand as a mighty, mighty man of God. Can you give God a clap praise for his glorious work that he do among us when we let him. Tonight I want to talk to you, tie the knot. Tie the knot. That's an old saying that we used to say when people get married, we're going to tie the knot. But December I'm going to be putting my granddaughter and my my grandson-in-law together in December. They're going to tie the knot. 
And I know some of y'all here are already married, but some of you need to start tying that night tighter. Tighter. That means some things that are trying to get in between you, you're going to have to reach up and tie that night tighter. You ever tied a knot in something couldn't get it loose? I remember my wife had this real tiny change, gold change, and somehow you move them things around, they just start tying themselves together. It was so tight you couldn't hardly untie it. Amen. You really had to spend hours to try to pick it loose because it was so tight. Marriages that work loose in the mix of this earth at this time I'm talking about will surely come apart. You ever walked and your shoelace came apart? Amen. And if you don't be careful, you'll trip on it. Marriage has been tied together but not tight with God, and therefore they're falling apart. But tonight, I'm going to help you, amen, in the word of God, not to let, it, let the enemy come in and destroy your marriage because of disagreement. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you praise and glory for this moment you've given me. I give you honor, Jesus. As you have your way among us tonight, speak as you will, do as you will, and do as you say. I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And Satan, you are rebuke. Talk to somebody on streaming. Wrestling in your marriage is not God's will for you. That's the devil's will. Can't get along contentious going on, anger in the mix of it. That's not God's will. But God is one. And he wants your marriage bond in such a way that Satan cannot shake it. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise and glory. Let your favor fall on this place. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen. Be seated in the presence of God. If you will, sister friend, go to God's word. Amen. Translation, Ephesians 1 through 6. And let's all read. Amen. The Bible said, from Paul, an apostle of Jesus, of Christ Jesus, by God's will to God, holy and faithful people who are united with Christ in the city of Ephesus. God will in peace from God, amen, good will and peace from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, are yours. Praise the Lord and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. Before the creation of the world, he chose us through Christ to be what? holy and perfect in his presence. Next verse. Because of his love, he had already decided to adopt us. Amen. You are in Ephesians 4 and 1. I'm sorry too if I said it wrong. I figured you won't call that show on inside like what I read. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 7. Oh, got in that, right? I'm a prisoner in the Lord. Encourage you to live the kind of life which proved that God has called you. Be humble and gentle in every way. Be patient with each other. Lovely, accept each other. Amen. Through the peace that ties you together. Somebody say, tied or not. Do your best to maintain unity. That the spirit gives, not them. There's one body and one spirit. In the same way, you were called to share with one hope. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
one God and Father of all, who is over everything, through everything, and in everything. God's favor, amen, has been given to each of us. It was measured out to us, who, by who? Christ. Who gave it, amen. Clap your hand for the word of God. The, one, the scripture I'm going to deal with is that third scripture in Ephesians 4, verse 3. Through peace that ties you together, do your best to maintain the unity that the Spirit gives. Amen. To build unity is one of the Holy Spirit's important roles. He leads but we have to be willing to be led. He leads, but we have to be willing to be led and to do our part to keep the peace. We do that by focusing on God, not ourselves. Can I get a better amen? amen? Everybody has an opinion about marriage. Many people do. How many of y'all listen to me at noon? They talking about opinions. Yeah. What is what it is or what it should be? The Bible discussed marriage before it mentioned any other human institution. Many scholars believe that union of Adam and Eve before sin entered the world is meant to model God's perfect design for marriage. Amen. A marriage should not have to model anything other but what God had described it to model, which is by his word. Also, as we heard this morning, every one of y'all got an enemy. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Say, I got an enemy. I got an enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, you got one. You got one. Yes, I'm not your enemy. Satan is our ultimate enemy. He is the arch enemy of the people of God. We should not be ignorant of his device. The devil is searching every day, using every available means, my God, to wage war against the family of God. Hallelujah. May be with your kids. And these days, you can't even go to school right without somebody white calling you black or calling you the N-word. Do you hear me? Amen. Or some bully messing with your child. Or your child getting tied up with somebody, amen, that's not godly. A lot of things the family face in the world that keep us, amen, anchored to the human ways of fighting instead of biblically, amen. One of the greatest things to do as a child of God, are, are you married? If you're married, are you single? You got children, burn them knees and get on your knees and begin to talk to God about getting the locks out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Can I get somebody to say amen? Amen, amen, amen? Abraham stood in a gap for Lot. Lock had went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and God was going to destroy that country. But he got on his knees and talked to God about saving Lock out of that country. Amen. The easiest way the devil can disintegrate the society is by attacking the family. By attacking who? The family. The family. Amen. Set up and pulling it down. He has set it up with some kind of trouble and then pull it down. Pull it down from the things of God. Pull you away from reading God's word. Pull you away. Watch this. Don't ever let the devil steal your desire to, I mean, you know, the activities of God. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Don't ever let the devil begin to make you think what you do for God is not significant. What you do for God is very, very significant. Can I get a witness in this house? The Bible said for the weapon, GW, read it good, I guess. 
is 2 Chronicles 10, 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against me saying Jesus, no, against the knowledge of God. Everything in this world got looking good. Amen. Look like you ought to be involved in it. That thing is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge you know. Amen. Do you hear me? So the devil gets you distracted about something that looked good. That's not going to stay good. It's a temporary fix. It's to pull you out of the will of God, to get you turned, to get you start doing something that's out of the will of God. Then he start pulling you in. And he'll start pulling you in. But while he's pulling in, he's he looking around you, getting your family at the same time. Because he got to get the head before he get in the house. He got to get the head of the house in order to get in the house. And if he get the head of the house, he going to get the whole house. The Bible said one in the house with light give light to everybody in the house. So if everybody else drinking whiskey, I'm in the corner praying. Because sooner or later, light going to make the whiskey bottle drop. Sooner or later, amen, somebody's going to put that, that weed stick down. Sooner or later, somebody's going to turn from their friend and start following God if I stay being the light. The Bible said that God's word is light and darkness cannot comprehend it. How many of y'all don't read the Bible? If one in that house got great light, Right now, if we turn out all the light and just one light, if you lit up a cell phone, that light would take over the darkness. Amen. That light would take over the darkness in this place. How powerful we are as the light of life. And Satan do everything to snuff out the light. Amen. So why others can't see how to come out of darkness. He's after the family. When he got Adam and Eve, he knew that was a family going to be involved because of what God do. God loved family. And he never have, uh, he never have built a family to dwell for themselves. Never. Satan did. Satan built family to dwell. I don't want to hear about God. Well, you want to hear about some God. You got statues around you that you've been dying to talk to. A lot of these family got statue. They, they, they really just really worship, believing that these gods will bring them to a place of prosperity and safety. That is a lie from the pit of hell. God made the family, not the devil. So anytime you're a child of God, you shouldn't have your family bearing witness with the world if you have taste and seen that God is good. Give God a clap praise in this house. We have weapons of warfare in Christ with which we can pull down any stronghold of the enemy. Frustrating his plan and casting down every satanic imagination against our life and homes. Hallelujah. It's nothing, you know, I think it was maybe three years ago. It was in the way, it was early in 2019. Woman down the street, you understand, used to be a member with at Dominion Church. Got cancer. She had the other church now, but she come to my house for me to pray for her about cancer. I started praying for that woman on my front porch. And she got to hollering, that devil started hollering and growling and going on. And I said, you coming out because they're going to come out. If they heard this woman, they'll call the laws on me. Because she was making some loud sign, my God. If you were there, you'd probably leave running. But I bought in the house, and, and <clears throat> that devil was grinding, and I cast that cancer demon 
out of that woman in my house. And that demon left that woman. She came back the other day, I think she, the next day, and asked my wife to pray for her about she was going to get a biopsy. And my wife prayed for her when she went and got a biopsy, they found no cancer there. You messing with devils. And I believe she dropped the devil in my house. You got to watch who you let in and out of your house. Okay, 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 okay. I'm getting too, I'm getting too serious with y'all. I'm getting too serious to y'all. Oh, super Christians. Satan know how to drop demons right off in your house. Hallelujah. And he'll drop that demon out to destroy your Family, maybe you need to go home and do a house cleaning. Maybe you need to take some oil and start sanctifying your house if you had drunk Billy Bob in there. <laughs> he start play, painting things in your imagination about, I need to go get a drink. No, 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 no. Get up, sanctify your house, run that devil out of your house, and plead the blood. Hallelujah. There are vice reason why the devil is attacking the home, amen, viciously, especially in these end times. Some of these reasons are the synetic, I tried to say that name, say that name for me, synergy, synergy, that is, principle. Marriage provides a good platform for synergic principles which means two people working together. Somebody say two people working together. Satan cannot bear the effect of this fact, so he attacks the unity in the family. When I talk about the unity in the family, it's not just two people being together, but two people united with the power of God, with Bible study, with praying together, Amen. And living together up under God's authority. Not them. Two people being together without God is just two devils walking together to raise hell somewhere else. Amen. Are you listening to me? This is very sincere for us as believers, amen, to begin to unify ourselves more in the things of God like never before. Say, for instance, if you're single. One of the things that me and Cheryl did when Ken went to the pen, we had Kendra and Kyra in the house. They had to pray. And we prayed for Ken constantly. What were we doing? We was uniting ourselves together as one. Putting forces to hell the flight because we were praying united through Jesus Christ. Which God started breaking down the barrier where we couldn't sit, but we were doing something that he told us to do. See, everything you do, you don't have to see it happen before you do it. You need to do it before it happened. Because God said, if I can get you to do it before it happened, it will happen. Can somebody give God some praise? Pray to God, bring your child out from under the hand of a devil. Praying to God, begin to visit the places where they at and start talking to them. To bring them out from under the devil. Pray until God make them come knock at the door and say, hey, I'm home. Pray until they say, Lord, I, God, Mama, Daddy, I left them alone. I let him go. I didn't want them. That's what I did for Ken. I prayed until he couldn't stay with that thing no more. Praise God. We all got the power here. Not the devil. Amen. We rule here while we let him rule. Mm. Synergy is defined as here it is the combined effect of forces that exceed the sum of individual, that exceed one person. Amen. One person effort won't get it done. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30. Let's look at an uh, example. <laughs> the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30. 
got it. How should one chase a thousand? You can help me read if you want to. And two put 10,000 to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. Now we see here, it take more than one person to win the battle. It take both of you to win. Hallelujah. In this synergy, if one would chase 1,000, then mathematically, two are supposed to chase 2,000. Why? Because each individual got one. Because one can only chase what? 1,000. Say, I can only chase 1,000. But what do we have? Two coming together are now chasing what? Come on, somebody. Look at your wife or your husband and say, we're going to chase some devils. Yeah, yeah. We're going to use that synergy platform, amen, to force demons out the mix of your family. How many of y'all got, you want your family serving God? How many of y'all want your kids serving God? Well, stop letting the devil worry you and do what it takes to make the devil move. God said, well, two touch and agree in my name, hallelujah. Touching anything in my name, I'm in the mix. Hallelujah. Whatever I bind on earth, God said, what is a lie in heaven, I lie on earth. If I could just find somebody that agree with me that's in God, I know my child will come home. I know hell will leave my house. I know devils can't do what they want to do in my presence if I can find somebody to agree with me. The effect of the force produced by their combination, amen, by far exceed the sum of their individual efforts. This is called synergy force, a synergy principle. I guess you better read it so you can understand it, Matthew 18, 18. What a powerful thing that God give us to use to stop the forces of hell from ruining our family. I say from ruining our family. While we sit back and live like we got to take care of the family how, don't, how about this? Let God take care of you. Amen. How about that? How about letting God take care of you? How about letting God take care of your marriage? How about letting God take care of your financial problem? How about letting God take care of everything concerning you? How about that? Is to let God take care of the situation. Because what you're trying to do individually, you ain't going to do nothing but create more crisis. Create more circumstances, create more situation. As a, you're only chasing 1,000. If a demon fighting you with 10,000, you sure just got one of them. That's just like trying to pay tithes and don't pay none of them. Uh oh. Because if you got 10,000 demons and you can only chase 1,000, how many more left in your house fighting you? 9,000. If you're not working together and both of you can only chase 1,000, how many you think you got left in your house messing with you? Messing with your family? Messing with your kids? Messing with your finances? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? If you're not taking this as serious as God said, Matthew 18, 18 says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bind in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Next verse. Again, Jesus said unto you, that if Two of you, two of you, a wife and a husband is two. It's not a husband and an animal. 
It's not a husband and another husband. They bold with that stuff now. I give I give honor to my husband that has another man standing up there with a beard like mine. Tell me I give honor to my husband who is at home. Hi, Chad. That's a trip, man. And church folks don't be bothered by it. Hello. But God said, well, two of us. That's all I need is you to come in agreement with me about anything that we need. God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Look what he said. A two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be what? For who? Of my what? Which is in heaven. That means God would turn the tides on that devil that's messing with your home. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> have mercy, have mercy. It's powerful to learn what God wants to do in tying the knot. Tied so tight that the devil can't get in it. Husband and wife have the potential of doing much more together than the sum of what they can individually do or achieve. Satan is always threatened by this principle in marriage. He always at peace with husband and wife cannot see eye to eye. He always at peace with a family that's divided. He always at peace with seeing that division, seeing that strife, seeing that anger, seeing that discontentment, that disappointing thing, that frustration thing. He always at peace seeing hell go on in the family. Somebody needs to make this devil by his knee in your presence. By standing up and rebuking him and saying, not no more devil. I'm not going against the will of God. That's who I need to unify myself with is the will of God to make a devil get his hand up off my family and out of my house. If you don't, he'll continue to have peace by disturbing you by some uncertain problem of circumstance that come in. Hallelujah. We draw in the devil ourselves by allowing our humanistic feelings overcome the greatness of God that's in us. We make foul decisions based on how I feel. You remember that sister Liz? When you said you thought because I rebuked somebody in Houston. Remember that? They good people, they raising hell. She didn't see it. They just so good people. I said, okay, you get on the plane and go home. Didn't I tell you that? Because all she doing is looking at the good part she thought she see, but she didn't see the snakes. She didn't see the devil in them. I have experienced the devil that was working in them, and I wasn't going to let them wrestle me to the ground with a fake hypocrite lifestyle. Amen. Everything that my mama told me years ago, she dead and gone now. Bless her heart, Jesus. She said, son, everything that looked good, somebody finish that. All oh, sucking now. Amen. Which she was telling the truth. Because people look good don't mean they good. And because they didn't act up in your presence, they don't act up in somebody else's presence. Oh, oh, come on. Throw your hands up, Lord. Give me discernment tonight. Give me discernment. For my family, for my marriage. Hallelujah. I wish all Christian couples will have this understanding that it is the devil at work in their homes. 
If your little girl, I'm talking to somebody looking at me on stream, your little girl is acting like they right now about 30 something years old and they only 16. And you're letting them have their way because you're absent from God. You have set a standard on how far you will go with God. Not knowing that Satan done fooled you to a place that where you have let go of something precious that you want to live right. And as you be continue to live your life opposite of God, your child have a right to be opposite of God. This is very important to marriages. Amen. They keep on living in a state of their own will and not God's will. Hallelujah. So we see that home, when there is no unity, there is no peace among them. Now, if you sing and you start arguing with yourself, you hurry up and hit the floor and ask God to forgive you. Because <laughs> you arguing with yourself. You are only somebody in the house. Amen. But most marriage, you got family, you got kids. And the devil wants you worry about them all the time. But if you get on your knees and talk to God, he'll talk to your kids. And he'll bring them out. Wherever state or whatever condition or situation they're facing, that night or that day, it will be bored. Couples should do everything possible to resolve their conflicts. Be in unity. And peace so that the devil can always, watch this, so that the devil can always be in trouble. Mm, 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 mm. I like trouble in the punk. I don't know about you. I don't have a special name for him. He's a dirt diaper. He's a punk. And what I want to do is keep him in trouble at all times. When it come down to my family, come down to my wife, come down to my home. Instead of husband and wife coming together to chase 10,000, Satan wants them to chase only a maximum of 1,000 individually and separately. So that at the end, they would not have achieved more than 20% of their combined potential. It is not possible for a man or woman to obtain their maximum potential together as husband and wife when each partner is on his or her own. When you go in your room, you do your Bible study, you do your praying, I'm going to go in my room, I'm going to do my Bible study, I'm going to do my praying. Come on, we're going to stop turning the TV off. We're going to pray for our children. Because I don't know where they at, what they're doing right now, but me and you finna do some damage in the heavenly realm. And then Satan King, we finna raise some trouble in his mix about my kids, about my marriage. Hallelujah, about my finances. Couples should be wiser than this old trickster, the liar called the devil. Couples should refuse to dance to the tune of the enemy of their marriage. They should find out what the word of God says about how to relate with each other and do it. Not talk about it, but do it. The Bible said we should not be hearers of the word only, but be ye. Yeah, when we become a doer, the word can do it. The word can take that devil out. The word can change that situation. The word can bring that relationship to an established place that will never go back to a place of hell again. Husband and wife should resolve to always put the devil to shame in their home. Woo. Now you can't do that if you let him cuss you out. And you know how the devil get in that one eye TV? Oh, don't get quiet on me. You know how we give him free will to say what he want to say on TV. And it don't bother us. 
Hello? The power of agreement, I say unto you, that if two of you, we just read that, should agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask. It shall be done for them. This is Jesus talking. Of my Father, which is in heaven. Amos 3.3. 3. Praise God. Bad went down on my car, my wife car in a <clears throat> I'm a mechanic at hand as well. I'm not only a farmer, but I know how to fix motors and do all kinds of mechanics. And uh I wasn't gonna let her car sit there and just look at me. Oh no. I will not. I don't want to drive in my car. Yo, okay, I'll <laughs> But the battery was gone out on it, and uh, I had bought that battery in 2018 for that Lincoln, and uh, when it went out, I know it was going to cost me a little money, but I went over and got a new battery and put it on. That's what I was doing when I left the church, is working on my wife. Look, at, I'm able to do this. Y'all don't know where I come from. Y'all don't have no idea what God has done for me. But I'm out here putting this battery on. And uh, while I put the battery on, you know, she always talking about, I want me a stern car that I want to bling. So I was in the place and I seen a, a stern cover for a stern wheel and I bought it. It said on that bling. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I say, this is for sure right here. I'm going to get this thing. And I got it pink. And uh, I put the new battery on and took the old one off and I put the new one on. She was just so happy. I said, praise the Lord. That's, you know, I call that working in unity. I don't have to wait till she tell me to do something. I heard her say something. And when I heard her say something, that got in my head. Well, and I tried to get her to go to the, to the you know, the auto place to get one. She said, no. Anytime she sat down and bowed her head in prayer, we don't mess up her intercessory. Because she deep, deep in prayer. So I had this opportunity, so I thought I would buy this for her. Didn't care what it costs. I'm going to get it for her. Why? I'm going to unite us together, not untie us. Can I get somebody just... Yeah. My son. Hey man, he put his truck to have a little work done to it. And God just, I was sitting in my, my office and God said, won't you call him and tell him to come get your truck? Since his truck going to be in a place of being worked on. I say, well, Ken, you come get my truck and use my truck to do what you need to do in it. But I told him this, I'll go fill it up with gas because I don't like to give them stuff, amen, all messed up. I get to them the way I roll. I fill it up, and I'm going to go wash it. And I didn't get to do that, but I told them now, i give you the money to go wash the truck. Because I didn't want to ride sloppy. Because he keep his truck clean. Amen. Yeah, he keep it clean. And I didn't want him riding like that. So whatever it take for me to unite, amen, what my son really are to me, Amen. I show him the deepest love because I hear from God. And I show him the deepest love that God told me to show him to unite him close to me because he has considered I'm his daddy and he treat me like a daddy. Not too many do that. You got so many disrespect their parents. Let me talk to every child in here. I don't care how old you are. Respect your parents. You'll live a long life, the Bible says. And so he just got it today, you know. Amen. But 
I wasn't going to let him have to struggle for anything because he don't let me struggle. He do not let me struggle. Amen. He's always at our call. He said, call me for anything. He don't care. He said, just call me. <laughs> and he shows up real quick, fast, and nervous. What you want, Dad? What you want me to do? Devil will do this to family. Miss the family. Make, you some, make one of them mad at you. With you parents. And amen. Your, your child mad at you because you didn't say this right. Or you tried to correct them. You tried to bring them into this. And now they're angry at you. You should not come in agreement that you would allow them to do what they want to do. To try to win them. If they come against God. You hear what I'm saying? If you're going to unite them. You unite them through the love of Jesus Christ about what God said. Don't go about what they think they should do. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, don't agree with that. Amen. Amos 3.3 3 says what? Um, except they be what? Agreed. Amen. That's why I must stand with the bonus and being agreed with my wife about any of my grandkids or my child. Amen. And in the presence of God and watch God unite them back in my presence based on my prayer life. Another thing the devil fears greatly is marriage is the power of agreement. Amen. It provides. Praise God. Don't make bad decisions towards the world for your child. That old saying that you say, well, I used to be young too. You can't compare your child to you. You cannot compare your child to what you used to do. These are different times. The devil is snatching teeth and snatching lives. And he don't care what age it is. You have to come to a present of your own self or find somebody agreement if you're single that believe like you believe about God and start bombarding heaven until hell shut its mouth. Hallelujah. Satan also know the scriptures. He know that if two people, especially married people, should agree together as touching anything in prayer, it should be done. He also know that too. God is bound to do a thing special. God is bound to do a thing, especially if it is influenced by the power of agreement. Amen. A two minimum numbers needed for agreement. So, Jen, you should find your prayer partner. You can get a lot of things done. You find somebody that you can, if you first got to be in agreement with God yourself. And how to be in greed with God yourself, you find somebody that is in greed with God and watch God start doing some powerful things. But you can't come and try to expect God to do something in both of you walking in difference. You cannot live for sin and think God will move powerfully for you. Amen. You have to live a righteous, dedicated Law life before God to see God change a circumstance. I imagine many times my son could have got killed in them streets. But because of our prayers, standing before God, we always pray. We always treat other families right or treat other kids right. Because we knew that if we were treating that child right, we were treating Ken right. So don't be snatching your head back at somebody else's kid. Because you might get somebody to snatch their head back at your kid. Can I get a witness in the house? And because of this, we were always treating others right because we know God was treating our son right while he was out there in that world. Amen. So what Satan do, he'll bring disagreement in between them. When a couple disagree, they can't pray effectively together. If you married, take some time out before you go to bed and say, let's pray before we go. 
my wife might go to sleep. And I might be standing up, sitting up looking at gun smoke. But I don't mess with Marsha Dillon. I tell you that right now. Don't do it. Don't mess with Marsha Dillon. He will hit you or shoot you. You can say one word, he don't put you on the floor. Next thing you know, it's gone smoking. But I get, you know, I, I, I'm really just excited to look at cowboy pitches while my wife's sleeping. I, we, I might look at a cowboy pitch for 2 to 2 o'clock in the morning. And then wake up and say, Cheryl, let's pray before we go to bed. She don't, she don't get up and say, oh, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. Can you see me sleep? Don't mess with me while I'm asleep. Don't, 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 don't. Come on. She wake up, straighten up, and we pray. Then we go to bed. Why? I see unity. I see tying that knot. Making it tight, especially in the time I'm living in. The third thing, the devil is a thief. John 10.10, 10, everybody know that. You can quote that by heart. Jesus said, the thief come not but for two. Make you happy? Make you glad? Make you joyful? Make you powerful? But for to steal. What he going to steal? He going to steal the unity. He going to tie the knot. He, if he loosen the knot, he know he's working good. If he can loosen that knot, he know it's going to come untied. Sooner or later, they are coming to his end. Now you're sitting up talking about, well, I divorced him, or he divorced me. I divorced him because of so and all. You divorced him because you didn't tie the knot good. Glory to God. The Bible said, and to kill. And to destroy. But Jesus said, I came, I come that they might have life and that they might, they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Brother, they gave me 10 minutes a while ago. I got a few more scripts. The ministry of the devil is to steal, kill. That's in any relationship. Whether you single or you married. Let me tell you something. If God has allowed you to get close to a man and woman of God, don't you do nothing stupid to disconnect that. I'm going to say it again. If God has allowed you to get close, don't you do nothing ignorant to disconnect that connection. Because God allowed you to be close. You didn't get that by yourself. God put you there. Amen. And when you see that butt, keep your mouth shut. Just know he got a butt. <laughs> and keep moving. People take advantage of their opportunity to be close to a man and woman of God. And that's dangerous for you to neglect. That is very dangerous for you to neglect. Let me say it loud. That is dangerous for you to neglect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God never give you permission, none whatsoever, ever, to open your mouth against that he done put his hand on. Amen. Brother, you like it or not, put your, I'll put a scripture on Facebook, put your hand over your mouth. You got to learn how to put your hand over your mouth to keep your tongue from doing something to yourself. Because you can't hold your peace. Mm, mm, mm. The devil is stealing, killing, and destroying. Jesus came to nullify Satan's ministry by giving life more abundant. Last scripture. 1 John 3 8. Get out of your way. Hallelujah. For this purpose, the Son of God, for this what? Purpose. What is his purpose? 
the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works with an S on it. He continued to work after your life. He continued after you. He continued trying to mess up the family. He continued getting into the family. Though that once was not, now he is in trouble. Because they lied Satan to bring his work in the mix of it. When there was no work of the devil at all in the mix of it. might destroy the works of the devil. Where's the devil working at in your marriage? Where's the devil working at in your family? Where's the devil working at in your home? Where's the devil working at in your mind? Where's the devil working at in your decision? Where is he working at? It's time to plant your sign in the face of the devil and all his little wimp. Devil, you don't work here no more. What you used to do, it don't work here no more. How you used to make us go bad, it don't work here no more. How you used to trip my family up, it don't work here no more. That thing you used to bother me with, it don't work here no more. Somebody need to let the devil know what you used to do, you can't do no more. Not in this house. You did it in my mama house, but you can't do it in my house. You did it in my grandma house, but you can't do it in my house. You did it in my brother house, but you can't do it in my house. You did it in their house, but you can't do it in my house. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I give you praise. You have conquered the devil. You have destroyed him. You don't put him to God. You don't put him to flight. And here we are struggling, whether we shall serve you or serve the devil. The devil is a liar. I, I pray tonight that marriage will bond together and start tying the night around their marriage and their families and their home. That God begin to mess up his work in these houses. Mess up the work the devil doing in homes and family. Amen. I may be talking to you tonight, but Satan is trying to tell you you ought to leave your marriage. Now, and I know I got very few here. But I can hear you. I can hear you. And I can hear voices talking to you. Don't you let the devil fool you. Don't you let him fool you. Because I can tell you Trash throw is treasure fine. Somebody will find that treasure and walk gladly with it. When people convince you that you need to leave what God gave you, you turn your head and give them the left hand of flight. Don't listen to people that's trying to convince you to walk away from what God has put together. I don't care if it's your mother. I don't care what type of relationship they have. Don't let them talk you out of your marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody or anything, don't let money talk you out. Because Satan know how to try to hand you the greatest payment in the world to get you just to separate. Don't do it. Don't sell out. Hold your ground in Jesus. In the last days, you must have a proof of God in your life to stand. You can't fake it to make it. You got to live it to make it. Can't fake it. It don't work no more. My pastor, he dead and gone. Dale May. He used to say it plain, fake it till you make it. No, 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 no. I find that better. You can't fake it till you make it. You got to live it till you make it. Through hell and hot water, you got to live it. Through persecution, you got to live it. You got to live it, my God, in order to make it. I'm getting ready to do a dynamic thing of putting my grandbaby, amen, together with her husband, soon to be husband. 
I'm excited about it. You know, and uh, I really respect you, Trayvon. I really respect you. I respect you because you are you good man. Okay, say it without crying. You respectable. You treat us right. You treat us with the most honorable state of mind. And I respect that. You got a good man, but also you got a good woman. I told Kyle, she said, Papa, you going to cry when you marry her? I said, I'm not. She was telling me at the car, yeah, yeah, Papa, you know you're going to cry, you're going to cry. I said, Kyra, I'm not going to cry. And sure enough, I am now. Because I see a miracle come together. How God is unifying our life with something good for our life, not something bad for our life. And it's going to be a glorious life. All them that talking about getting married, <laughs> tell them get out of your face. It's one of the greatest things can ever happen to a man and a woman, not a man and a bird. <laughs> I'll let you go home in a minute here. Uh, <clears throat> my grandson, I put them together. Some of y'all know when they got married, right? They're having a great life. <clears throat> you know, because they working it like God say work. I know they have a little bit ups and down, but they working it. God came to manifest, Jesus will manifest to stop the works of the devil. I mean, he's going to continue to try to work. Why should you let him work you completely out of the will of God? Devil, you ain't going to do nothing but work me more into the will of God. Hallelujah. I put my son and his wife together. Yeah. I put Sister Brittany and Ian together. You know, there's many others. This guy that was bowed down to you this morning that seen at the altar, I put him and his wife together. They separated now. What happened? They took it back to the world. And it didn't last long. And they're apart. I married my son in California. I flew out there. Did I drive or fly? We drove. We drove. I drove in that crossroads, didn't I? Yeah, I know it. And I put him together. And they're separated now. Why? Because he took it back to the world. Anytime you take your marriage back to the world, it's a guarantee sooner or later, you're going to say, well, I divorced because. Lie of the devil. You can make it work. God will make it work. I'm still working this. I'm working this thing. I know without work, it'll go bad. Without work, it will go totally bad real fast. So I'm making my intention and purpose to work it. The way God has told me to work it. And go for my families too. I work it based on what God told me to work. Because I didn't come out of a family that loved God. I come out of a family that loved hell. It did everything that hell ordered to do. It left me struggling on how to be married. Didn't know what it was like until I met Jesus. Now I know how to be married and stay married. 
Hallelujah. Well, clap your hand tonight in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, let the precious blood of Jesus cover every family right now. I feel the anointing. I see it. I see the flames of God's anointing cover every family in this house. Those that once was and not married no more cover their life that they have a new beginning concerning their life. Doing it your way, Yahweh, not their way. I thank you as our family, our family that might be in that world, God, this prayer tonight. <laughs> like Abraham, Lord God. Lot wasn't right. He wasn't right. But righteous Abraham had a relationship with you. That when he prayed, you sent angels to get Lot out. Lord, we got family here that got family that's still in that world. We're asking you to bring their children out of it. And all those they love out of it. You're greater than any of us. You made us. We didn't make you. And therefore, I ask you to make ways for their family to come to you like no other. In Jesus' name, I give you praise and glory and honor. I'm talking to this and looking at me on streaming right now. You want to get down on your knees. Humble yourself. And repent. And repent not apologizing. Turn from what you're doing. If you turn from what you're doing, your child will turn from what they're doing. I see your child connecting to gang members. It's not safe. But it's going to take you to turn. God said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Yes. Turn from their wicked ways. And pray. I will hear and heal their land. Father, I give you praise tonight to that person I'm talking to. That see that child going astray. That you begin to answer prayers when they make that turn. Huh. You just a turn away from seeing God change your situation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. amen. Glory to God. God bless you. Okay, co-pastor. Praise the Lord. She left on me. Oh, okay. I want you to remember this here. You can throw it away like trash if you want to, but it's going to be somebody else's treasure. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's give God a thunderous clap. Praise. Amen. As our pastor, amen, leaves the pulpit, giving God praise and glory for the word. Amen. The word of God, it was truly a blessing. Amen. To tighten that knot. Amen. In Jesus name. Glory to God. How many are going to be a doer of the word? Amen. We're going to do it. Amen. And for those that are single, you tighten that knot with the Lord. Amen. In Jesus name, tighten that relationship with the Lord and tighten the relationship with the Lord, even if you are married so that the marriage can be tightened as well. Amen. In Jesus name. Glory to God. Let's give God another clap praise for pastor. Amen. Thank you, pastor, for the word of God tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Streaming, I know that you was blessed. Be sure to go back and hear it again. Amen. Because our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Be sure to share it with your family and your friends. Amen. Those that you know where their uh, their marriage, you know, is rocky right now or, you know, seeing, you know, the way of divorce. Amen. God is able to turn it around. Amen. The word of God is able to turn it around. And we heard a word tonight. Amen. In Jesus name on how we can tighten that relationship and tighten that that marriage. Amen. How many know it's always a work? Amen. Uh, Pastor, is it how many years will y'all celebrate this year? 50 years this year. Wow. Give God some glory. Amen. Celebrating 50 years this year. And we just heard Pastor say, still working on it, saints of God. So, amen. And we are taught that we're always learning. Amen. We are always learning. So don't ever stop working it. Don't ever stop, amen, working the word of God in your marriage and in your relationships. We can use this in all relationships as well. 
Amen. In Jesus name. I thought it was really powerful when pastor said that if he can get the head of the house, he can get the whole house. That was powerful. Amen. In Jesus' name. So if you are the head of your house right now, you make sure that the enemy cannot come in. Amen. And sift you. Amen. So that he cannot get your house. That is so, so powerful. Amen. In Jesus' name. We give God praise and glory for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Streaming. Amen. Thank you for tuning in right now tonight. Amen. Or later on, we give God praise and glory for you. We thank God that we have the resource available that you are able to tune in with us virtually. Uh, we pray that you continue to come right here and be blessed by the word of God. Amen. In Jesus' name, at this moment, you have the opportunity to sow into the kingdom. Amen. To give. Amen. On this word that you have heard. Amen. In Jesus' name, wherever we put a seed and that type of seed that we sow, that's the harvest that we can expect. Amen. And so sow into the kingdom of God. All the information is right there for you. Amen. It's on the, on the news feed. Amen. It's on our website. So be sure to sow a seed for your marriage. Can you do that tonight in faith? Can you move in faith tonight. Amen. And trust God's word to sow a seed for your marriage tonight. Amen. To tighten those areas where it may be loose. Amen. That you can sow a seed of hearing the word and trusting the word of God to work when you work it. Amen. In Jesus name. So we encourage you sow your seed tonight. Be blessed by it. Amen. Let us know. Amen contact us and let us know the blessing, the testimony that God has done for you and your family. Because I truly believe that when we trust and have faith in the word of God, God is going to give us the answer. God is going to be faithful. Amen. So we want to celebrate with you and we want to give God glory. Amen. For what he has done for you and your marriage and your family. Amen. And we'll be back here on Tuesday night for our Tuesday night Bible study. So be sure to set it on your alarm or on your clock. Amen. You want to tune in and be blessed by the word of God. Amen. But you can also also catch our pastor during the week, Monday through Friday at noonday. You do not want to miss the hour of power, amen, of the word of God. It's great to put it in while you're on your lunch and going throughout your day, amen, in Jesus' name. So, amen, because we know that the word of God, amen, is living and active, amen. And so to hear the word, amen, throughout the whole week is so powerful, amen, in Jesus' name. You don't have to wait, amen, you know, until Sunday, till next Sunday, but tomorrow, amen, on pastor's private Facebook page, you can hear the word of God. But to catch us here at Dominion. It will be on Tuesday night at seven o'clock. And so we pray to see you back. Amen. In Jesus name. Until then, we pray that the Lord bless you and keep you to make his face to shine upon you and be gracious and enlightened to you in Jesus name from our pastors, pastors Kenneth and Shirley Lawrence and from the Dominion family. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God some glory for our streaming audience. Wow, was that not a powerful word today? I know that the word of God has been a blessing to you and that the word encouraged you. And from our pastors, pastors Kenneth and Shirley Lawrence, and from the Dominion family, we thank you for tuning in with us today. We pray that you have felt encouraged, that you feel driven to come back and tune in with us and hear a word, a word of faith just for you. God bless you.